uh, Chinese cash has helped the regime stay afloat and has helped uh, pay for Iranian intransigence at the negotiating table from April to July when the Rouhani administration was at the helm and pay for Iranian intransigence uh, away from the negotiating table from August to present, which is when the new ultra hardline government of Ibrahim Raisi uh, has come to the fore. Uh, and this is quite the achievement even by uh, Iranian standards, or I should say the standards of the Islamic Republic, that the government of Ibrahim Raisi, his presidential cabinet, his administration, his vice presidencies, uh, is the most internationally sanctioned cabinet in the history of the Islamic Republic. Uh, there are people whom the Europeans and the, the Brits have, sa have sanctioned that the Americans have not. There are people that the Americans have sanctioned that the Brits have not. Uh, it's an entire uh, trade-off of sanctioned individuals subject to human, who have conducted human rights abuses, who are weapons of mass destruction proliferators, who are illicit financiers, uh, who are appointed to their position simply by virtue uh, of being close to the supreme leader of Iran, Ali Khamenei, being close to his network uh, inside the country. So there's a litany of these ultra hardliners uh, at the helm. And this constellation is very comfortable with their escalation options, as I've mentioned before, and does not believe that all this talk of a plan B that you've heard really since late August uh, 2021 uh, is actually going to ever materialize. And they do have some data on their side. They may be ultra hardliners, they may be zealots, they may be revolutionaries, but they're able to look at 2021 and realize that in phase one, as the Biden administration wanted to get uh, the Iranians to the table, it tried to distance itself from the Trump era sanctions that inherited. In phase two, once the indirect diplomacy commenced from April uh, to uh, June, July of 2021, all that talk about getting a bigger and better deal, about getting a stronger and longer deal, fell. The US did not talk about that. Aim number one, two, and three became getting the JCPOA back at all costs. So once the Iranians realized that, uh, and I realized that Washington was looking at the outgoing Rouhani administration as a, as a closing window of opportunity to resurrect this fatally flawed and fast expiring deal, uh, they were able to once again play their good cop and play their bad cop. And uh, unfortunately, I think Washington fell for it. And in this instance, when the Raisi government came in, they realized how desperately Washington wanted a deal. And they're trying to see how serious uh, Washington is about this talk of a plan B. And so far, their answer is, clearly not that serious. You've had a couple of enforcement actions from the Treasury Department, uh, some of which have been important because they signal there's a potential change in direction. There has been uh, some tightening uh, of the oil sanctions, but ultimately this uh, you know, illicit shipment of, of uh, crude and petroleum products to East Asia, and the Treasury Department specifically says East Asia because it doesn't even call out China specifically, but anyone who's looked at the data uh, can tell you where these ships are heading uh, and, and why they're heading there and who the likely customer uh, actually is here, knows that it's the Chinese that are keeping uh, the Islamic Republic afloat. 